But also you said something in there. You said you still edit all your own videos, which is like probably the, one of the more surprising things. I, I think a lot of people assume that a channel like yours is some massive production. Uh, tell me about the video making process. What, it, what goes through your head when deciding to set up a squirrel maze in your backyard and like have them go through and measure all the data and, and figure out which one's Gus and how is it all? <laughs> like, what is your, what on earth is your process from like ideation to making a whole video? Yeah. I mean, you still, you, you and I are like rare cases. You edit a lot of your own videos too and stuff, right? <laughs> This is exactly. like, I feel like you and I yeah. always have the same conversation with Mr. Beast that we talk with him. He's like, what are you doing? <laughs> Every time. He, he's literally like, why haven't you hired an editor? What, what's yeah. happening? Why? This yeah. is the first thing he always says. <laughs> yeah. It's hilarious. Um, yeah. I think So for me, I think I'm different. I mean, from talking with other folks, I think I'm different. Like I'm never, I never, ever, ever have the moment where like, oh crap. I don't have a video next month or even six months from now. I like most, my videos are basically planned a year out. Like I'm currently working on eight or nine different videos right now in different stages. Either it's like a research phase, yeah. you know, or I'm currently. Wait, okay. So what are the phases? Cause that's, that's all that a year is a long time. So what are the f phases I guess of these projects? Yeah. So like, you know, naturally I'm, we got Glitter Bomb 5.0 in the works, and I started working on Glitter Bomb 5.0 literally in January of this year. Because there's part of what I do with those videos is like part of the fun is just like the engineering challenge of of starting over again and like going back to the drawing. Like, what are the different? Like, how can I engineer this thing to be even better? Like, you know, cons, and that and that's a basic mo for myself too. Like, if I do like a, a sequel of a thing, like I've done a few elephant toothpaste videos or the glitter bomb or you know even the squirrel stuff it's like the only time i'll do a sequel is when i know there's a banger way to make it better so like you know the glitter bombs or the elephant toothpaste or you know the squirrel videos like if i have a really cool twist a way to really level it up then it's like i'll challenge myself and try and level it up so with the glitter bomb i don't want to give too much away but this year it involves drones and when you <laughs> open the lid, <laughs> there may oh, be wow, some okay. drones that are gonna like the mini drones that are gonna, like fly around people's houses uh, and oh, uh, spraying glitter uh, on top of just an absolutely uncharitable amount of fart spray this year. I mean, we're really lo leveling that up as well. So, but anyway, so that's a video. Like that's a lot. There's a lot of engineering that goes into taking a lid off a box in someone's house that can be banged around that. They're not going to treat delicately like a, a prototype that it, where it needs to work and you need to be able to get the footage from the cloud and you need to like be able to retrieve the box. There's just a lot of engineering that goes into that. So part of the reason they take so long is, especially for the builds, is a lot of times it's just the engineering. There's a lot of research. You know, one way to make a viral video is, or the way to make a viral video is to just evoke some kind of visceral response in the person watching it. Like that's the only way to make it. It has to be for something to be remarkable. It has to be able to be remarked about. And so it needs to make them feel wonder or awe or amazement or sadly anger. That's like a, why a lot of like, I think, you know, things are so politic are like um, just kind of fractured. And, you know, the bipartisan aspect is like or the partisanship is just, if you, if you make something that makes people angry, they're going to share it. Um, and so by doing like the world's largest Nerf gun, the world's largest super soaker, by definition, if it's the world's largest, longest Hot Wheels track, it means that you've never seen that before. It's the most extreme version of anything. And so it's going to have that awe aspect to it. So by doing that, by trying to do something you've never seen before or have a totally different take, it just takes resources and time to get to that point. So I have a word, I have a document, like a notebook basically that has a bunch of ideas in it. And I've been doing this for over a decade now, like you. And I was worried for the first two years that at some point I'm going to run out of ideas, but it's like, that, that's for sure. I'll never run out of ideas. I always have <laughs> a year's worth of ideas in there and things are coming. Uh, yeah. And so, 
Yeah, that, that's basically it. So it, they're just in different stages, and some of them are, are kind of half baked. Some of them, it's like, hey, I need to find someone who does this thing. Uh, like, I have this one idea that I've had a while that's like has to do. I don't want to give too much away, but it has to do with like a a primitive form of hunting. And I think there's people on Earth still who do it very well, like blow your mind amazingly well. And I want to kind of make a machine and go find these people and like challenge them. But it's like, that's one part of it is like making the thing myself, but part of it is like finding the right person and then traveling to that part of the world to meet with them. So like different ideas have different lead times for different reasons. Um, but yeah, yeah. Good. I feel like when I, when I watch a good video, like part of my brain, anytime I'm watching a movie sees like the plot and the movie and watches that part. And then the other half of my brain is like wondering how they shot it and like appreciating the cinematography of certain pieces. So when I see a good YouTube video that I can tell took a lot of time and effort to create, then I appreciate it even more. Like that's, that's where my brain goes. So I feel like every time I watch one of your videos and you do hit that moment of like learning or like that engineering twist or like, dang, he really built that punter robot to kick the football that far. Like all of that coming together in the video, that's like my favorite part of enjoying the video, obviously. Um, but just knowing that they're planned so far in advance is like, I don't know. My brain couldn't handle that. Like when I'm ma- when <sighs> I'm making a video, and I and I get like ninety eight percent done with the edit, and it's like midnight. I cannot and I will not leave until it's done and uploaded, <laughs> or I'll come in the next day sick of it. Like I can't stand it. So I I appreciate that you that you you put in all of that effort. The trick though is making it look like I think there's an making it look like it didn't require all that effort. You know what I mean? Like. I'd say at this point, this is a little nugget for you on this uh, on your on your podcast because it's tech. But I'd say maybe like twenty percent of my shots at this point are just from my iPhone. Like it's oh, yeah. not about. And Casey Neistat would say this all the time, but it's like it's not about your gear. It's about the story. It's about what you're do. Like it's it's the story and and what you've done that matters. And so. I almost try not to, like, I don't want a red camera. I mean, for what you do, it makes sense and it's cool. And it, I, I would say it actually is a little bit about the gear and making it look really, really no, beautiful. It, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but for me, it's like, it's not. And, and there's sort of an authenticity that comes with it, not making it feel like it's an overproduced TV show thing. And if it just feels like I built this cool thing and I'm just a dude and I'm just going to kind of film it and tell the story in a fun way, but it's not going to be super overproduced. There's, I think it just feels comfortable. And I think the medicine goes down smoother when I, when I get into the science stuff, cause you just, you feel like I'm just a dude in my backyard. who's passionate about this stuff, which is true. Like that is what the situation yeah. is. But I think there's an element, if you get too focused on gear and the beautiful shots and too cinematic or, just making it feel like a standard overproduced TV show thing that you just lose that and it sucks the soul out of it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. There is, there is an element of like reducing all of it to just the core of the idea, which is just like, Hey, yeah, I'm a guy in my backyard. I got some squirrels. Let's see what happens. And I like, I kind of enjoy like the moment when I'm watching the video, when I realize, Oh, this was shot on an iPhone. I didn't. I wasn't even thinking about that before. Usually, as soon as I open the video, I'm like, "Oh, what was this shot on? What? Oh, it looks like this shot with like three angles here in this camera." So I like that. I like that it gets me so immersed that I don't even notice. That's that's right. the mark of a good video. So then, so then you get into the editing stage. How long does it take you to edit a, a, a whole video? Once, I'm, I'm assuming you just have hundreds of gigs of footage of things being engineered yeah. and working. I think. Mean- yeah, for I mean, for like the squirrel videos, we have probably like, uh, I think it's like, uh, what would it be? I'm trying to think. It's maybe like a thousand hours of footage or more that we got to break down. I got to I gotta cut it down to 15 minutes, you know? And I, I, to be fair, I do have an editor I work with who like is a, who goes through all the raw footage and organizes it for me. So it's like I'm totally editing it by myself. But it's still personally a hundred hours of me personally editing a single video. Like that's my time, not to include the other editors. So 
Um, yeah. Yeah. I tend to not actually even like football kicking robot as an example. Like a lot of times I don't know what the story is going to be. And you know, my stuff is very story driven. That's like a misconception where people are like, Oh, you're a really good builder. And I say this a lot, but it's like, I'm an okay builder. But it's like I'm a I'm a I'm a pretty good storyteller. I'll, I'll give myself credit for that. And so I yeah. I kind of don't have the video pre planned out. Like I'll go out and film the thing and just get a lot of footage. And then once I'm done filming it, it's like okay, what happened here and what's the narrative here and what's the best way to teach the science here based on the results. Um, and so a lot of times, like the intro, and not even a lot of times, every time the intro where it's like, so we're going to go out here and see blah, blah, blah. I filmed after the fact. So it's like, I will right. do the thing. I'll see what happens. I'll figure out what the best story is. And then I'll weave the narrative in from there. And so I'll film post, you know, and obviously I do VO and that kind of helps with that as well. Hey, thanks for watching this waveform clip with Mark Rober. I uh, just want you to know that if you don't like this clip and aren't already subscribed, then the next package that arrives at your house may or may not be a glitter bomb from me. Just saying. Yikes. <laughs> That's it.